Hello everybody. The upcoming Web Intersect 2.0 social network training series is going to work with JSON objects in certain aspects of it and will be completely reprogrammed using more modern approaches. So before the new Web Intersect series begins this winter, I want to deliver a couple of quick lessons on JSON before that time comes. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is a lightweight format for creating objects that is part of and built into JavaScript. JSON is part of JavaScript and not a separate entity. It is built into the raw JavaScript programming language, so you can just use it. JSON is becoming a very popular data interchange format, so much that it is beginning to battle XML in popularity and usage. In tutorial number two, we will retrieve database information and return it to your JavaScript application in the JSON encoded format. But first we must learn to parse JSON data and create JSON objects in the JavaScript side of our applications. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, you can see I'm starting with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document and I have my script element in place. So you would just want to get to the point to where I am now. So let's create a new variable that's going to represent the first JSON object. And we'll call it object1, obj1 for short. And that's equal to the opening curly brace and then you put a space and close the curly brace and then you put a semicolon and that's your first object but it's empty now so object one is ready and initialized but it has no value in it yet there's no data a JSON data works like key value pairs so the first thing I'm gonna put in is the key my first key for my first piece of data within my object is gonna be user and the value for user is going to be John. So you can see I put the key of user and then I put the colon and then within double quotes I put the string John. Now to put the next piece of data within that JSON object I'm going to put a comma, a space, let's type in age, colon, and then if you want to put a number or a boolean value in here, a true or false or a number, you don't have to wrap it in double quotes or single quotes you can just put the number in like that then let's go on to the next piece of data within this JSON object comma space country colon and in between double quotes let's just put United States so you can see we have three pieces of data one is a, a number and two are strings so remember the key is always on the left side of your colon the value goes on the right side of the colon and you can see it's sort of like an array but it it opens up more possibilities of data indexing and data handling than arrays could offer you okay so now that you understand the structure of that one let's make two more that are sort of identical this one's gonna be named object 2 and this one will be named object 3 this object represents John this object represents the user will and this object represents the user Abiel and you can even name that object Abiel if you wanted to or uppercase like that but for demonstration purposes we're just gonna name them object 1 2 and 3 okay now here's where the beauty of JSON really comes into play I'm gonna create object 4 and that's going to be equal to three new different data objects first one is going to be called u1 that represents user 1 that's my key and then colon and the value for u1 is going to be equal to obj1 which is object1 which represents the user John and you can use your objects for any kind of data handling it doesn't have to handle users you can be handling uh, a list uh, a shopping cart that somebody's using to shop on your site you can handle all kind of things okay so all we gotta do is put a comma here and then we put u2 which represents user2 colon obj2 comma space u3 colon obj3 so do you see what we've done we've created three objects here that each have multiple pieces of data within them and they can be numbers they can be arrays they can be boolean values they can be strings and whatever you want to place in them and then for object 4 we've deeply nested those first three objects that we've made so we have objects within objects so you can really do deep data nesting within JSON by placing objects within objects within objects and you can go really as many levels as as it will handle. Okay, now we'll demonstrate how to work with all of that data. 
So we'll type in document write, which will render some output to the page when we run it in the browser. And we can use dot notation to get into each of the properties within all of these data objects. So data object one here has three properties, user, age, and country. I know I called them key value pairs before because that's really what they are. But this is really a property. User is a property of object two, and it has a value of will. Age is a property of object two as well, and it has a value of 27. So you see how that works? So each of these properties can be accessed using dot notation. So you just go obj1 dot user. So you know what that'll give you. If you look at obj1 user, we're going to get a value of John written to the page. So now let's render this file in the browser. Press Control S, make sure you save it, and then render it in your favorite browser. See? John. Now if I want to access the third one, obj3.user, that'll give me Abiel from Mexico. And then you can write a string. Just put the plus sign, a couple of double quotes, another plus sign, and type in obj 3 dot age and then plus sign again double quote double quote plus sign and then obj3 dot country and then here in between your double quotes you can type in so this would say abiel is the age number will show up there and you can type in years old and lives in mexico so now control s to save it and render in browser abiel is 19 years old and lives in mexico so you see how that works? You can just use dot notation to get to all of those properties for the data object, which pulls the value. So once you reference the property, the value is pulled. Now, the value can also be changed. So let's take that same line, control C, and let's go down two lines, control V. Just paste the same exact line. Now in between those two lines, let's update Abiel's age, or we can change his country. Let's move him to another place in the world. How about Italy? So let's just say obj3.country is equal to Italy. So before that document write happens again, let's put a horizontal rule just to separate them. In between double quotes, just put a horizontal rule. HR right there. Now run that in your browser. See? Abiel is 19 years old and lives in Mexico. Then the, after we updated it, the country property in object 3, right here, this line did that. It updated it from Mexico to Italy. So that object is forever changed now. Object 3, one of its properties. And that is evident in our output here in the browser. See, Abiel was first from Mexico, and all of a sudden he's from Italy. Okay, let's take that document right HR line, and let's put it under that line there. Actually, let's put two of those in place, and remove the HR from the last one. Now I'm going to show you how to work with object 4. Remember object 4 was the one that had deeply nested objects within objects. So what you can do is use dot notation to go deep within all of the object levels. So let's say document write obj4 dot u2 dot country. So what that should give us is we go into object 4 which is this one now inside object 4, it has three properties, u1, u2, u3. So we use dot notation to go into u2 right here. u2 holds a value of object 2, which object 2 is sitting right there. So if we go into the country property, it'll pull United Kingdom. So that's what we should get as a result from that document right. See? United Kingdom. And you can make a string out of that similarly by saying, just copy all that, put user here, plus, double quote, double quote, plus, put that one back there, is from, and then you run that in your favorite browser. So it says will is from United Kingdom. Okay? So using dot notation, you can go deep into all of your object levels no matter how deeply you have them nested. And actually this code that you see right here, or really this code that you see right here, can be written the same way. It can be expressed the same way like this. So instead of that alert, let's do document write. Again, let's just put in another HR. We'll just separate all of these so you can see all the results. 
So really this and this will give you the same output. And you can see this looks more like uh, how we go into arrays and dig data out of array indexes. So let's press F12 or whatever way that you render in browser and you see we get the same output. So you can use the dot notation like we use here or you can use the brackets. Okay, now I'm just going to comment all of these out. I'm going to go on with uh, another example that is a little more complex because it deals with arrays nested inside of your objects. Okay, I'm going to pop in two arrays that I previously created and they're very simple JavaScript arrays. This array has three items within it and its name, its variable name is meats. This next one is variable name fruit and it has four items within it. Now let's create a JSON object to hold those. So where were we up to? Object 4. Let's make this next one var object 5. obj5 is equal to open a curly brace, close your curly brace, semicolon. Now we can put arr1, that stands for array1, so that's the property, colon. On the right side of the colon we put the value we want, so let's just put meets and that represents, that's the variable name for this first array that we created for that holds beef, pork, and lamb. Now we'll just put a comma, space, ARR2, colon, fruit. Alright, so now we have object 5 that has two arrays within it and its properties are array1 and array2. So under that, let's type in document write, open and close parentheses, semicolon and in between your parentheses let's type in obj5 dot arr1 go into array1 and let's get the first value which is 0 since all arrays have an index starting index of 0 so beef is that 0 if I wanted pork or the second element in that array I would put a 1 here so let's just leave it 1 and you'll see it will select pork it will write pork render that to the browser See, it wrote pork because I went in and, got, and grabbed that out. So knowing that, we can write a string sort of like this that goes into object 5 twice, but it digs into array 1 here and it digs into array 2 here. So let's see what we get. F12, pork with apple for dinner. That sounds lovely. So you can see it picked the meat and it picked one of the fruits. Let me just uncomment all of these now and you have a whole bunch of examples that show you how to dig into those data objects even update those data objects right here remember we changed Mexico to Italy within object 3 country property so it's very simple to update the data within those objects and it'll be changed from that point on once you update now we'll be showing you guys more in-depth uh, lessons regarding JSON data handling and the next one actually will show you how to use PHP to echo JSON encoded data back to your JavaScript applications. That way you can use uh, like an AJAX request to that PHP file. The PHP file instantly spit back some JSON encoded data that was dug out of your database. You can dig data out of your MySQL database using PHP and JSON encode it. Get it ready to be JSON encoded and send it. Echo it back. So that will be in tutorial number two. So let's see what we have here. Let's make sure everything's good. Okay, that's fine. Actually, Will is displaying twice there. So let's just comment this one out because that was just showing you the alternative method instead of using the dot notation like we did here. That was the alternative method with the brackets to dig that information out of the object. So now you know how to create simple JSON objects and these, this is how you would get your information back from your database something like object 4 here and then within your JavaScript you just go picking things out and getting what you need updating things whatever send it back boom 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 and I don't know how deeply data can be nested within JSON but it seems like you could just keep putting objects within objects within objects within objects and you'll have almost a whole database worth of information within one JSON object is crazy. I know that's not a reality, but that's not something you would want to do realistically, but I think it's, it has that kind of potential to, to nest that deeply.
All right, so you know how to create your basic objects, and you know how to deeply nest objects within objects. You know how to output the data that you want to get within those objects. You know how to update the data, put arrays, and multi-dimensional arrays. You can, if you want to learn about multi-dimensional JavaScript arrays, you can go to develop PHP, and it's in the new JavaScript section there, all about multi-dimensional arrays and associative arrays. And really, an object is very similar. These basic objects are very similar to any of the objects that you see here, are similar to an associative array, because an associative array has key and values. A regular array, like you see down here, it just holds values. An associative array has keys and values, just like a JSON object. So I'll see you lovely people in part two if you're interested, and we'll show you how to get some data back from the server and parse it in your JavaScript applications by creating an AJAX request for that data, and it'll come back JSON encoded, and we can use the methods that we learned in this lesson to parse it. Okay.